Executive Assistant Patrick Massey was considered an invaluable resource to Bionational and their interests, often negotiating mergers in his unorthodox but effective manner. He was the clear choice to command Operation Outreach, with an unquestioning loyalty to his employer and a focus on completing mission objectives by any means necessary. Massey's accolades were impressive, MBA from Harvard, doctorate in corporate law from Cornell, he could have had his pick of the big two companies. Instead, he enlisted in the Marines. He received the Silver Star for bravery during the oil war, four Purple Hearts with a few hundred confirmed kills under his belt. It had been believed, however, that he didn't enlist out of patriotism. He liked it. He commanded a recon unit in the Tansu Rebellion on Wakashi's world, picked up a few decorations there. He had more decorations than a Christmas tree. Then suddenly, an illustrious military career was halted when he was court-martialed. It seems he tried to kill his commanding officer for failure to order his squad to attack a civilian encampment. He thought the CO was a coward when he wouldn't order an attack on a group of civilians Massey thought might be hiding enemy sympathizers. He knocked the officer senseless and led the attack himself. He killed 85 men, women, and children. Word is more than half of them got dispatched by Massey personally. Bionational, aware of his reputation and seeing the value, paid off the military tribunal and hired him immediately. As Rain was quick to muse on the matter of Massey, Good help is hard to find, and it's rare when you find a man who loves his work. While Bionational had an appreciation for Massey's skill set and methods, they were not without a particular set of reservations. A cap of C9 Surset had been injected into his hypothalamus along with a beeper during a routine physical. The contingency was that if Massey ever turned on the company, somebody in security would only need to get within a click of him and send a coded pulse, and... Blamo. Massey, however, was aware of the bioexplosive implanted within him. He sought the services of a private doctor to perform a surgery that would alter the implant's abilities without raising any suspicion. He'd kept the locator they'd put in, its tracking in place, but disarmed. He didn't give a damn if they knew where he was for now. When he decided he didn't want them to know anymore, the beeper would stop sending its signal as quickly as he could touch a button on his belt. As long as they let him do his job, Massey wouldn't have any problems with the company. But if they somehow lost faith, well, there was no point in being unprepared. Mistakes happened, even though he didn't make them. Always better to be ready than not. The job this time was a big one, worth a lot of credits. For him, the money was just a way to keep score. So far, Massey was winning big. There wasn't anybody else close. He was the best. He intended to keep on being the best for a long, long time. Massey was married with a child. He, of course, never shared the sensitive nature of his work with those closest to him. Before Massey left for Operation Outreach, however, there had been an unexpected matter of security that suddenly arose. Dreiner and Rain had discussed the situation, still remaining optimistic about their venture despite the situation. Dreiner explained, well, one of the communications people slipped up, sent an uncoded file to Massey's residence. Computer didn't catch it. Real snafu. That would have been bad enough, but, unfortunately, Massey's son accessed the material. The boy showed it to his mother. Neither of them understood the full implications, of course, but they got enough of it to possibly compromise the mission. Massey was in the shower when the message came through. When he got out, his wife started babbling about what they'd just seen. Massey really had no choice, not if he wanted to maintain security. It was SOP, of course, but they had been married for six years. Even as cover, you'd think you'd want somebody else to do the wet work on this one. But he did it himself. The company made sure the investigative team from the local police were friendlies, and Massey's story about coming home to find them dead was accepted. The local law figures it was a robbery gone bad or a wilding by somebody clever enough to bypass building security. Under the circumstances, Massey performed admirably. I had the psych boys do a workup on him right before liftoff, and he registered well within tolerable limits. I wonder how it feels, being a sociopath, I mean. I would imagine it's quite liberating. 
In this series, I'm recounting the Earth War as depicted in the Aliens comic series and the events leading up to it, as well as its aftermath. The accounts are explored as originally published, despite certain names, locations, and other events having been altered over time. If you missed it, the previous video in this series is Bionational's Xenomorph Specimen. Stay tuned for the next video, which will be going into further detail on Operation Outreach. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like. And you can also subscribe for all the latest videos. A very, very special thanks goes out to Wayland yutani executive, M. Yorick, part of the Patreon Hive. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. In the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.